Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bregaton. Off camera, I was looking at the quest log under Coming to Terms, and I saw this note. It seems that Luca has a penchant for heavy drinking. I wonder if I can use that to my advantage. Because I do remember last episode we saw he had wine stains all over his shirt. So my first thought was we needed to go find a bottle of wine and bring it back to him. But I remembered we did see a Luca elsewhere, and I recognized that when I first saw him standing here in the Balian Trading Company. But I assumed there were two different Lucas. I also didn't remember where we saw him at, but I think it was in the Wild Mare. So I'm going to try to go there at night time. Let's see if we can't speak to him. Another option is to try to intimidate him, but I feel like that's going to cost us reputation with the Bailing Trading Company, mm -hmm. which is something I'd rather avoid if I could. I think I thought... <laughs> That Luca was in one of the uh, familial estates, either the Bardados or Valeras, and so I dismissed it. Will do. I think he was in the Wild Mare. Subtle indeed. It is done. I speak to Alesha Sarasso. Ack, just a moment. The dwarven woman at the desk does not look yet look up. She taps at her chin with a quill in her hand, a look of furious concentration on her face. After a few moments, she scrawls something down in the ledger in front of her. There we are. So, did Alvari send you? I'm putting together the numbers. She will have to be patient. She glances up at you, distracted, then looks up again, blinking owlishly. Well, you're no clerk. Sientere, Watcher. I was preoccupied. Do not take it personally. They put me in this side office for a reason. Oleska Sarasso, advisor. And you are the Watcher that frightened the Harbor Master. Did you get turned around? I can't imagine what you'd want from me. Sarasso leans sideways to look past you at the door leading into the hallway. How fares the company? I will not lie. Our fortunes dwindle. I must ask the director for some clarity on these figures. I cannot imagine why they are so low. What can I do for you today, Watcher? Who's in charge here? I only handle the numbers, sir. If you are looking for work, you should speak with Governor Alvari. Her office is downstairs, towards the back. With that, Sarasso nods politely and turns back to her work. Ado, Watcher. Governor Clario had many kind things to say about you. I have you here in the ledger. A net profit. What can I do for you today, Watcher? What do you do here? Put plainly, I am an advisor to the Director. I keep the books in order and offer advice on the operations of the fleet. Profits, losses, all here. Rather than pointing at a ledger, she raises a hand to tap the side of her head. I have a better head for numbers than for small talk, I'm afraid. It isn't personal. It is nice to be asked, I suppose. I hardly ever get anyone in here unless they need help with their sums. I don't see why. You probably have the most important job here. That is true, but hardly anyone says so. Sarasso smiles, an earnest amused smile that brightens her eyes and puts color in her cheeks. I have been lucky to reach this position. I enjoy the work, and it is clear that I am needed. Being useful, it is a good feeling. Can I ask you some questions? I can spare a few moments. What can you tell me about the Valera and Bardado families? Ah, them. Oh, God, they've been at each other's throats from the start. And ask if anyone cares one speck why it started. We should have left these feuds back in the Republics. The Bardatos are some of our most valued investors. The Valera family makes its business in pirate hunting, and they have an open contract to keep the waters around Neketaka clear. 
but they spend more time plotting against one another. A waste. Can you tell me a little more about the Valian Trading Company? Well, it is funded and so controlled by the Songretta Mea Compresa. I can tell you that much. A council of 11 investors. Dukes, nobles, not all from the Republic's mind, but all very important people. I feel like this is a redundant question. Uh, who runs the company? While the Songretta is away, Canta Nero is the company's highest authority on the island, but he mainly concerns himself with diplomatic affairs. For the usual business, you want the director. All right, uh, that's all I wondered about. Valeska nods, already darting glances toward her papers. Farewell. She said the governor was in her office downstairs, but that does not seem to be the case. Apologies, but the director is not in. We have to return another time. I still can't believe that I thought Luca was a different person. Because usually named NPCs in video games don't share names. That's unusual. I've got it. Alright, so we've read that before. That's the, um, the wild priest that gets beat up. A folded note. This note appears to have been quickly jammed under this bench, as it's slightly crumpled. It's covered in what seems to be several failed attempts at a Morris verse, including a, fill, a few ill-advised rhymes for helm and sword. And when I, I was little, me and my brothers used to spend hours chasing each other through the Merkberry fields. Don't think a day went by I didn't have a skinned knee or a bleeding elbow. Well, we did that sometimes. Only my brother usually had a hand in the bleeding. He older or younger than you? Either way, I bet he's just as strapping. Older was was older. Then Raid Sarah's invaded. Oh, I didn't. I mean, I, of course, it's gone, but I'm so sorry. All right, let's grab the lost dog. On it. Toby. While Toby is following you around, you receive a bonus to perception, and your party gains a bonus to max health. I think that's the best combat-centered pet we have so far. I don't know, the recovery penalty from armor being reduced is also good. Hmm. Yeah. I know, but Toby looks more like a scrapper to me. Sure. Wait, was she in there before? Echo, see. You have business here? The guard holds up a hand, appraising you in a few sweeping glances. Uh, whose office is this? Governor Lueva Alvari. Governor Alvari manages the company's day-to-day -day operations. As you can imagine, this makes her a very busy woman. The guard eyes you pointedly. I've just come from Port Maget. Governor Clario suggested I might find work here. You are in luck. The governor is between meetings. Go on in. Nice. Guess we lucked out earlier. She just happened not to be here so we could loot the office. Sitting next to her desk and lost in thought, Governor Alvari looks up at your approach. Her expression of intent focus thaws instantly. She greets you with a startlingly sunny smile. An interesting surprise. The Watcher of Cadnoir, no? I am told that is your ship in the harbor. A cozy, I mean nothing by it. All newcomers are of great interest here. I am Lueva Alvari, 
governor in residence of the Valian Trading Company here in Nekataka. What brings you to my door? Are you in charge here? An interesting question. Governor Alvari's mouth twists in a rueful smile. Director Castol concerns himself with the business of the Valian Trading Company as a whole. He must coordinate our operations across the entire region. I am afraid you must deal with me for the time being. You seek work? Information? These are things I can help you with. She folds her hands. Could you tell me a little about the Valian Trading Company? Well, the Valian Trading Company has been here in Nekataka for many decades now. Its main interest is in the mining of Luminous Adra, for which we have negotiated with numerous tribes for access to the Adra sites and, where possible, labor. The company also engages in more mundane lines of trade, of course. Ultimately, we are merchants. What kind of work? Work suited to a watcher. Your arrival presents an opportunity. How much do you know about the Adra trade? What's your interest in the Adra? It sells for its weight in gold. Our investors have charged us with claiming every vein we can reach. Alvari punctuates her blunt statement with a smile. Every viable deposit is of interest to us. Cartographers, surveyors, at any moment we have a dozen expeditions underway. Some weeks ago, we received word of a large quantity of luminous Adra on a distant island. Pukukohara, it is not charted on any of our maps. However, Pukukohara is said to neighbor the island of Tikawara, and we've already made contact with the natives there. We dispatched an expedition to Tikawara with instructions to locate the Adra site and determine its value. Our people have neither returned nor sent any word on their progress. Alvari spreads her hands in a gesture of helplessness. We are too long a delayed, and someone must finish the job. A watcher can determine if there is essence in the Adra, if it is worth the trouble and investment to remove it. Information for which we are willing to pay. You want me to find your people? Ideally. But if the worst has come to pass, I would like you to complete the investigation of the Adra deposit. Anything that may assist the company. What do you know about Poco Kahara? Not much, unfortunately. A few superstitions among the locals, but they're unusually tight-lipped about the subject. That's it? What if the Adra is worthless? Then it is worthless, and we save ourselves wasted effort. Either way, you will have fulfilled your end of the bargain. Here, I will mark Tikawara on your map. This will be of some use to you, I think. It entitles you to act as a commissioned agent of the Valiant Trading Company. Present it and you will be recognized as such. Alvari presses a document into your hand. Until then, I believe we are finished. Return here once you have word of our agents and our prize. Oh, and take care upon the open sea. There are greater hazards in these waters than a few pirates. Welcome back. Is there something else you wish to discuss? I had some questions for you. Please, go ahead. What is it you do here? Ha! What don't I do? She gestures to the papers upon her desk. I tend to the day-to-day -day business of the Valian Trading Company, our negotiations, contracts, and so on. The director takes a broader view of the business. You might call him our navigator. He directs the company's ambitions in the dead fire. Can you tell me a little about the Valian Trading Company? Well, the Valian Trading Company has been here in Nekataka for many decades. The company also engages in more mundane lines of trade, of course. Ultimately, we are merchants. Yeah, skip that. We already listened to that bit. But what are your thoughts on animancy? A very broad question, no? But I suppose you mean to ask if I approve. It is simple science. I was never of a scholarly disposition, but I recognize that animancy can be nearly as useful as a good caster. As with most fields of study, 
Its merit depends on the mind pursuing it. Have no more questions. Very well. Anything else? Farewell. All right. Well, we have a course of action. Also, we couldn't access this during the day. We came here at night. I think there's only a guard standing over here. We'd probably make it to this thing. With the clerk not being there. So, let's go wait till nighttime. We have a couple things we can try. I might try to go to the um, director's office as well. But I don't think those four guards are going to disappear. I mean, there's a reason there's four guards in front of his office. Now, I'll be seeing you. Yeah, he's right here. I'll have to wait till nighttime? Less work, more drink, please. Enraptured by the bottom of his glass, Luke regards you with dim comprehension. Mel, are you again? Shove off, these are my quiet hours. Observe Luca. Luca is undeniably intoxicated. His bearing suggests that this condition is far from unordinary. He seems open to suggestion, though not a pushover. See anything you like? I'm not so far gone that I won't ap appreciate and admire. Luca attempts to wink, fails, and tries again with both eyes. You don't look so tough when your guards aren't in earshot. Why? Why you degenerate little nut? I can, I can have... Luca stumbles over his words and blinks at you, refocusing. His eyes widen and cheeks bulge. For an instant, you're convinced he's going to vomit on the spot. But he swallows with a pain wince. Hey, don't be embarrassed. A lot of folks would have just vomited. I cannot make the contra disappear. I am more disposable than their damn paper. Lucas swings his cup around. A splash of liquor arcs over his head. He should never have baited the Dwape into signing that contract in the first place. If the tribals cannot understand the basic terms of an agreement, that is their burden to bear. Luca nods to his drink and wipes off the rim of the cup. The Juana may not know contracts, but they know when they're being cheated. That, huh. And we want the Juana cooperative while we're on the job, don't we? Well, it's a matter of dignity. You can't ask a respectable clerk to ruin perfectly good paperwork. I like how it combines the different skills and dispositions. So we use both benevolent and diplomacy to be rational. The system is far more fleshed out than the first game. You would doom an entire tribe to preserve your dignity. Staring thoughtfully down into his glass, Luca nods to himself. Benfetto! Very well. The tribals can keep their island, and it's one less contract for me to worry about. Farewell. Nice. I still want to try to go yeah. back to the embassy at night. What can I do for you? You see anything you like? Because there may be some looting we can do after hours. Which realistically is not something I would right. do with this character. Because it runs the risk of burning the bridge with the Valian Trading Company that I'm currently employed with. I really just want to go take a look-see. What did you do before you were a ship hunter? Ah, rough times, lass. Would spare you the telling, lest you be set on it. I reckon I can handle it. Crew I will if they give me any job they fought like to kill me. I'll live to prove them wrong. 
Can't live the good times unless you survive the bad. That what being a pirate's all about? Aye, oh, sure enough. Besides, so lasses say the scars be adding distinction. I've read all that already. Up we go. Oh, it's a book event. This cabinet is full of contracts, ledgers, registries, bills of sale, and even more obscure records of Nakataka's bureaucratic underbelly. The way these are organized, there'd be no point in poking around aimlessly. Someone would have to approach this archive with a goal in mind if they wanted to locate the right information. Yes, for I wonder I if the real contract for, um... The quest we just did is in there. I think it's slow, because there could be a guard patrolling in here or something. Yes? But it's weird, it wouldn't let me find it. I guess because I technically accomplished my goal already. So maybe it's either or, not both. My eyes be open. What are you doing here? Uh, business took longer than expected. I'll be leaving now. Then permit me to escort you safely outside. The Night's Watch, they deal roughly with intruders. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, they don't want me to go upstairs. Adair, I get the feeling you don't like me much. Was it something I said? I think it was something I said. No, it's not. Uh, you're not doing anything wrong, exactly. Really? I mean, you tell me if you had a problem, right? If I'd bothered you this whole time? It's nothing personal. I just don't think we need to be talking, is all. Oh. Well. Thanks for clearing that up. Aw. Poor Jody. She wasn't a religious fanatic. Maybe they could have gotten along. As now, far as uh, fanatics go... Can I see anything you like? She's a little bit more tame than Durance. <laughs> He's far more amiable. His Durance was, um... He's pretty crotchety. Put it nicely. But a fantastic story. He was, he's a brilliant uh, companion. You'd be better off mooning after someone with half a foot between her ears, lass. You can't dictate what the heart wants, Seraphin. Thought you of all people would know that. Well, the heart can be a right stupid git sometimes. It don't always deserve your listening. Nakira, you return. What say, friend? Tawainu touches his brow in greeting. A strange smell follows you, I say. I hope you're not unwell. <laughs> Aluka listen to reason. Duwape will keep their island. Akira, I cannot believe. A light after our long sorrow. His smile broadens, and Twainu slaps his shoulder with encouragement. My village is modest, but I came prepared. I set aside a few gems for trading. They are yours by right. Yeah, absolutely not. How is that the rational? I guess... Okay, I see how it's rational. 
You assume that he has other money to pay for... Okay. But no, I'm not doing that. Uh, thank you. I'll accept whatever payment you have to offer. You are a friend of the Duape. We do not forget. Tawainu smiles, rolling his shoulder with the ease of one who stands suddenly taller. You are a friend in need, I say. Neat. Let's go see if Luca regrets his decision. I'm assuming he does. We lost an entire island. How did we lose an island? The contract. That is, you see. It'd be lucky if I send you back to the Republics, or if I just send you back. You! I hope you are pleased with yourself. Because of you, I've been straight of my position. I've been with the company for years. I had my own office. Now I'm ruined. Oh, can I hire him on? There's work on my ship, if you want it. What? You must be joking. You arrange for my dismissal from the company, then offer me work as a deckhand? I didn't arrange for that. It was just a side effect. It'll be more fun than contract disputes. I promise you that. I damn you, Watcher! But I accept. I will gather my things. <laughs> Luca blinks, looking a little startled. Awesome. Uh, what does he do? Not a lot. He only has one point where most of these other guys have two. Can I fire crew from the ship? If so, how do I do that? Throw him overboard? Well. Oh, of course. We'll take all the hands we can get. Alright, let's go report to Martino, who took care of the sailors, uh, outside of the wild mare. How may I help? I saw Kima is there during the day, as Mr. My way through. Woe to those who labor in the shadow, for nothing is hidden from Aethys's divine sight. Gone shepherds us all, traveler. Seek out his temple along the sacred stair, that thy path shall be made. Also, I find it interesting that the Valera quest isn't directly tied to the Bardados, where the Bardados quest is directly tied to the Valeras. I wonder if that's supposed to tell us something. We did read that last time. Or... Am I supposed to play nanny? They listen to you, Martino. Enough! We have a guest. I no longer hear the perverted anthems of Rawatai echoing across Queen's birth. Martino nods with cautious approval. I had some questions. And I must entertain them? Go on. Well, that's not a question, but a statement. The Royal Deadfire Company sailors are gone. Gone without a scratch. To each their own. He unceremoniously tosses you a sack of coins, his interest already elsewhere. Stick with me and you'll be on the winning side when the dust settles. He favors you with a grin. Just say nothing. I'm waiting on word about the next job. Pay a visit in a few days and we will talk more. Ado. 
What brings you to the Hall of the Valeres? Atello opens his palm. I want to talk to you about the Bardados. If we must. What is it? Crowning. Atello beckons you to continue. I think your family should consider a truce. Shoddery. Our disagreements are beyond the point of shaking hands. I'm surprised he says that. Because he seems like the more reasonable one. This is not your feud. If anything, I question your interest. You're a businessman. You would know if my investment was false. Hmm. You have little to gain by peace between our families. But you speak as if you might. Atello purses his lips. You want to help? Convince Azali to negotiate. She ignores my invitations. Until then, leave me be. Atello turns away from you, intent on focusing anywhere else. So I feel like if I report to him that Izali knows they're planning something, which he's probably against in the first place, it's going to favor them. And I don't want to burn a bridge with the Bardados yet. I think if we do enough quests for both sides, we can convince them to come together. As long as we stop the plot that's against the Bardados, we should be fine. But they all equipped their sails, and he, Martino said he had a... Another quest for me in a few days. I wonder if just leaving and coming back works. Alright, so those sails don't do anything. But the Valera sails give us uh, plus 5 meters combat speed, plus 5 sail health, plus 5% travel speed. Hopefully it doesn't make the Bardados angry at us. Adair whistles at the dog. Behold, Aethys is risen again. He is glorious in form and purpose. I'm going to try something, just leaving coming back to see if Martino will give us the next quest. If not, then we might be done with Queen's Birth for right now. I have to look back through my quest log to verify. My time is free to give him. Okay. Well, I'm going to call it here. Our next episode... I'll look through all of this off camera to make sure we're done. And then uh, we'll probably leave Queen's Birth. Continue exploring Nekataka. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.